Hello everyone, I'm going to be telling you about the redshift today and uh, not just a normal redshift, I'm more talking about the cosmological redshift and Hubble's law. So, Hubble, Edwin Hubble, uh, he was using Cepheid variables and he was using them. You know already about Cepheid variables, but there is a video as well with that title if you don't know what they are, but they were really good. Um, uh, stars or type of stars to determine distances okay so he was using them to determine distances of many galaxies and then he noticed from this his data that anywhere he would look at all the stars all the spectra of the, all the stars in the galaxies they were uh, red shifted so the lines the spectral lines were shifted towards the red part of the spectrum okay now we know that for Andromeda, that's not the case, because Andromeda is in a route to collision with um, our own galaxy, the Milky Way. But, you know, most galaxies, anywhere you would look, they would show redshift. So this means that all the galaxies appear that they were receding, meaning moving away from us, okay? And then the other thing that he saw was that there was a linear relationship. The more distant the galaxy, uh, the galaxy would be, the greater of speed of recession. So the faster it was moving away from us. After a long, long time um, and many, many data, um, we were able to get this uh, linear relationship into a graph, okay? So you could get a straight line. Now the first data that uh, Edwin Zabel had, it doesn't quite look like a straight line, but eventually became a straight line. And we got to this uh, relationship that says V, the recessional velocity of the galaxy, is equal to H0, which uh, the, is saying that is a constant, so Hubble's constant, times D, the distance to the galaxy, okay? Now, the velocity is in kilometers per second, uh, the distance is in megaparsec, so that means that the Hubble's constant comes in kilometers per second per megaparsec, okay? Now, as you can see, and if you know enough maths and if you know about the about, uh, enough about graphs, you can see that the Hubble's constant is simply the gradient of the line. So the Hubble constant is still a number that we don't quite know what it is. So it does depend on the data that we have. And also because the universe seems to be accelerating at a faster rate than we were expecting, maybe the data that we have in the Hubble's constant is also changing, okay? Because of that reason. So it's not just about the data that we have and then the gradient of the line changes is also because there is other stuff going on in the universe, okay? Now, Hubble's constant in this PowerPoint, I will be using the number 72 um, plus or minus 8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. But to be honest, when I was doing this PowerPoint, I did go to a reliable website uh, to do with astrophysics. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, but that's what it said in the website, that nowadays we believe that the Hubble's constant is more towards the 90s, okay? But anyway, you can either use the Hubble constant that they give you, or you may be asked to calculate the Hubble's constant from a graph or from uh, some values of velocity and distances, okay? You will see how in a second. So Hubble's constant. So just to make sure that we know what is going on, the recessional velocity is proportional to the distance. Bigger the distance, bigger the velocity that the galaxies move away from us. The galaxy spectra also redshift. Again, Andromeda here is, um, is, is quite an exception, okay? Because again, it's colliding against us or is in a route of collision. So it's moving towards us. So it shows blue shift. And the amount of redshift is related to the velocity that the galaxy receipts from us and that's again the formula Hubble's law and these are the things with units okay so kilometers per second for velocity distance in megaparsec I have a video called units of distance that tells you uh, what this megaparsec is but a megaparsec is going to be 3.09 times 10 to the power of 22 meters and then h0 is a Hubble's constant it could be a number anywhere from 50 to 100 kilometers per second per megaparsec we are still trying to figure out the number okay and as you will see in a, in a couple of videos from now that number that Hubble's constant is very very important okay 
so pause the video and give it a go to these questions so I have a couple of questions one about the speed one about the distance one about the value of the Hubble constant and another one which conclusions can you take from Hubble's results okay so I'm going to show now the answer so again you can pause the video to do the questions and the answers will be velocities uh, the constant times the distance so this would give you 7200 kilometers per second always put the units always put your working out because this gives you marks okay when you're doing this in an exam distance is the velocity over the Hubble constant I'm using 72 here so 27.78 megaparsec or if you want to uh, be consistent with um, significant figures you can put 28 uh, megaparsec and then the Hubble's constant um, this one for this exercise uh, for the distance sorry velocity over distance it gives us 75 kilometers per second per megaparsec okay and um, the conclusions from Hubble um, went to a theory called the Big Bang okay now I'm going to talk about this theory in another video so just go to the video that says probably Big Bang um, because I want to say a little bit more about this theory uh, the, um, the other theory that was against it so kind of the two theories that could be the ones for the beginning of the universe and uh, so you know and some evidence so this is going to take a while so I'm going to stop this video in here so now and then i'm going to give you another video about the big bang okay see you in a bit bye and where do i take all these things here it is bye <laughs>